You guys know the routine. One second while I sync both cameras. What you can see behind me is happening quickly. Greetings, unsettled souls! Boy, that's quiet. Anyway, welcome to the Correct Views. I guess it's the quiet edition. I'm glad I'm not covering a, a rock concert or something tonight. Good Lord. Welcome aboard, friend. Glitches and all. Or we go on, we're here at the show. I want to thank everyone for tuning in, and I now have to start every show by reminding everyone that it's listener-supported. Because YouTube doesn't allow conservatives to speak freely anymore, or libertarians, of which is more of what I actually am. So you can donate to the show at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. Donate through PayPal. Thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. Yes, I am asking for help, because currently we can't, um, we can't get monetized if we speak freely. And if we speak truthfully, which is what's going to happen here, and that is why you have tuned in. Listen to this, Daily Mail. Exclusive for female Boston College foreign exchange students who were sprayed with acid at Marisville train station are pictured as it emerges. Two of them suffered facial burns. Now... Let me tell you something. It used to be, you can sometimes find this by going back to old movies or old films. How many of you watching are fans of the old black and white movies? I don't mean anything, any piece of crap that happens to be black and white. I mean good movies. Well, you'll find within a lot of those films that if you harmed an American, it was almost, it was just part of the dialogue as if we were to say today that we breathe air. Uh, we don't harm him, he's an American. That used to really mean something. If a man or a woman was an American citizen, it's sort of like the power that Paul had in the Bible. Uh, I should say that the, the, the Roman, the uh, emperor had, he didn't know who he was speaking to. It was one of the rulers. It wasn't the emperor. It was one of the rulers. And he had said, I, you know, I didn't realize who I was addressing. It used to mean something to be an American. It had a certain amount of, you don't do this to an American or else there will be serious repercussions. Well, let me ask you what happened to those days. Listen to this. A woman with deep psychological problems was in custody in the French city of Marisier on Sunday after spraying four American students with acid and burning two in the face. The attack took place shortly after the 11, uh, shortly after 11 a.m. on Sunday, it says, at the St. Charles Station, where the four women were preparing to board a train. All were Boston College juniors in their early 20s. Three of them on a study abroad program in the French capital and the fourth based in Copenhagen, Denmark. They were named by the university as Courtney Silverling, Charlotte Kaufman, Kaufman Michelle Krug, and Kelsey Costin with a K there. Uh, you can see the pictures on uh, live cam there, uh, HDF. You can see them behind me, so I guess I'll scroll a little more slowly. <clears throat> where it took place at there, that uh, rather prestigious looking building. The 41-year-old attacker used a cleaning substance containing hydrochloric acid that she thought to have picked up from the local DIY store. Four emergency service vehicles arrived at the station, which was packed on a Sunday morning at the tail end of the holiday season. After carrying out the assault, the women displayed photos of her burns allegedly picked up in an earlier incident. Now, the reason that this is alarming is we have a tendency to invite a great number of refugees into the country from war-torn Syria. That isn't so bad if they're genuinely in need, and if they don't wish to necessarily become American, then they at least are willing to respect those who do not wish to be Islamic, to any degree, be it Sharia or otherwise. If they've come here to work, it's not such always such a bad deal. Now, here's the problem. We don't know whether or not they've come here to bring harm or not. And it doesn't mean that every time that somebody gets acid splashed into their face that it's somehow tied to Islam. However, this is a very, very common tactic within Islam. 
and uh, you're going to see an uptick of these because we're not careful when we do vetting in this country. She displayed clear signs of suffering from deep psychological problems, said a source close to the case, who added that no slogans were shouted out during the attack, and it is not thought that it was terrorism related. So, like I said, it doesn't mean that every attack is necessarily tied to Islam. However, the influence there is, I think, very hard not to notice. Put it that way. It may not be politically correct to say it, but it's a little hard not to notice. Um, Silverling posted on Facebook Sunday that her and her friends are all safe. Uh, she wrote, thank you so much to everyone who has reached out to see if I'm okay. <coughs> and or has been praying for us. <clears throat> I did not receive any injuries from the attack in Marisville this morning, so one of them unfortunately made it out well. There is her, uh, her posting there you can see. I pray that the attacker would be healed from the mental illness in the name of Jesus, and I receive the forgiveness and salvation that can only come from him. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him. So definitely very forgiving and very good to see. I mean, for those of you that say we never cover any good news here, we got some good news in the midst of an acid attack. Acid-based products are easy to use, and they can be paid for in cash. Well, again, I mean, they're trying to come, use everything as an excuse to do the attack on cash. But let's just look at this for what it is. It's a very dangerous development that we're seeing more and more often within the West, and I think it would be foolish for us not to address it, whether or not it's tied in some way to Islam or not. And, uh, I mean, there's plenty of horrors in the world which are not... For instance, North Korea. Kim Jong-un, Fox News, Otto Warmbier's parents open up about son's torture by North Korea. They are terrorists. The first time Otto Warmbier's parents saw their son after he was flown back from North Korea in June, they were confronted with the sound of inhuman howling so terrifying that Otto's mother ran to the phone. Really let what I'm saying sink in here a bit, friends. As they waited for the plane bringing him back to Ohio, Otto's parents, Fred and Cindy, had held on hope <clears throat> with medical care in the U.S. that he would eventually get better, but their optimism didn't last long. They instead saw the reality of torture at the hands of Kim Jong-un's brutal regime. Their son was now blind and deaf, with mangled teeth, jerking violently and moaning on a stretcher with a feeding tube coming out of his nose. Again, I'm not saying we need to go rushing into North Korea, but as one, sh one segment smoothly segues into the next, when did it become okay that you treat Americans like this? Because if, again, I'm not saying we need to start a whole war. I do like the sanctions that Trump has done. And I like the fact that at least he, I guess, is playing a, a role in changing this. But where are the rest of the politicians saying, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. you don't treat American citizens this way? I mean, I mean, are you really looking here at what he suffered? Blind and deaf. <clears throat> he was like valedictorian or something. He gave the speech at his school. You could hear him speak on his confession tape where they made him talk about... Uh, Deliberately packing his quietest shoes, the best for sneaking, which uh, clearly was scripted. Nobody would ever say that. Um, he lost his eyesight and his hearing. His teeth were all busted up, and he was convulsing and moaning, probably in terror and pain both. That's how he would spend his final days before dying at the University of, Hans, uh, University of Cincinnati Medical Center on June 19th. President Trump had said uh, it's a great interview with the parents of Arthur Warmbier who was tortured by North Korea. So I like that Trump is out there forwardly with this. Um, I mean, what are you going to say? I mean, you, is this something that you just hear and assume doesn't matter? Or do you really listen to what I'm saying here? Cindy told Fox and Friends that she and her husband had been informed that Otto had been in prison for more than a year 
for allegedly trying to steal a propaganda poster from the North Korean hotel. We've covered that before. And his brain was damaged. So what we pictured, because we're optimists, is that Otto would be asleep and maybe in a medically induced coma. And then when our doctors here would work on him and he'd get the best care and love that he could come out of it. She said during the interview. The couple had given since the first interview since the 22-year-old died. The reality of Otto's injuries were much worse than the warm beers could have imagined. We walked over to the plane. The engines were still humming. They had just landed. We got halfway up the steps. We heard this howling, involuntary, inhuman sound, Fred said. <clears throat> we weren't really certain what it was. In other words, it almost sounded as though they were picking up some tortured animal or some, some greatly damaged person, like they were going into an insane asylum. And depending on how much of that was pain, they may have driven Otto Warmbier literally insane. Okay, did you hear what she said? Howling, involuntary, inhuman sound that they were not certain what it was. That was what was left of their poor son. When they spotted their son, they found Otto on a stretcher, jerking violently, and he was he producing the terrifying cries. Otto had a shaved head. He had a feeding tube coming out of his nose. He was staring blankly into space and jerking violently, Fred said. He was blind and he was deaf. As we looked at him and tried to comfort him, it looked like someone had taken a pair of pliers and rearranged his bottom teeth. They didn't just imprison the man for 15 years. No, 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 no. For stealing a poster. And the way he was uh, in the get-up, you couldn't even tell it was him. But they pulled his teeth out with pliers. <sighs> he added, North Korea is not a victim. They are terrorists. They purposefully and intentionally injured Otto. <coughs> North Korea has denied any cruelty in saying that he was dealt with according to domestic law. The Warm Bills, of course, called it indis <clears throat> indis inexcusable and said, We see North Korea claiming to be a victim and the world is picking on them. And we're here to tell you that North Korea is not a victim, Fred, the father said. There are te they are terrorists. They've kidnapped Otto. They tortured him and intentionally injured him. And he said lastly... It was astounding to Cindy and I to discover that North Korea is not listed as a state sponsor of terror. We owe it to the world to list North Korea as a state sponsor of terror. And that is one of the things, friends, that Donald Trump has done well. If you look at the uh, latest travel restrictions, not that there was a lot of travel anywhere, they are now listed, <clears throat> I don't know, outrightly as a terrorist organization, but I do know they've made the list. They've drawn the attention that uh, should be given, friends. That brings us to only one thing, and everyone that listens to this show knows what that one thing is. Oh, yes, as quiet as it is. Why is it doing it? I don't know. Anyway, it's the Dumdy! The quiet, shh, the quiet ass Dumdy of the day. Um, if you don't know, I, every day I pick the stupidest story, the absolute, does somebody in it? Some circumstance was dumber than anything else that I had seen during the day. And that is very hard to do considering that I write for the conservative Daily Post. But believe me, friends, I have found the dumdy of the day, the dunce cap of the month, which is the stupidest of the month that will probably be coming either Friday or Monday. Friends, are you ready? Have you taken your horny goat weed? Have you taken your Viagra? The sun.co.uk sex on the beach. Dozens of massive dildos mysteriously wash up on an Italian beach forcing lifeguards to ban kids from bathing. And ban them from doing something else if they find these. Um, <coughs> kids have been banned from an Italian beach after dozens of dildos washed up on the shore near a monastery. <laughs> Friends, it happened near a monastery. You can't make this up. Um, I'll give us the appropriate song here in a minute. You can't make this up. The filthy phallic flotsam, great wording there, was washed up on the seaside by the heritage of Cam Aldoli, 
near Naples on Italy's western coast. And there, there the uh, schlongs are for all of you to enjoy. There you go, ladies. I hope you enjoy. Well, my, my female subscribe rate just went through the roof. It's going to be great. Welcome aboard, ladies. Yes, we're covering dildos that were covering a beach. They were discovered by shocked volunteers from the Licola Mayor Clean Association who were charged with keeping the coastline clean. Well, I guess they were dicking around. One volunteer who did not wish to be named said, When we saw them, we started to laugh because we could not do anything else. Association President Umberto Mercurio said that because of the way sea currents flow, a lot of rubbish frequently ends up in the beauty spot, he explained. This channel leads to the very end of its course. Now, <clears throat> he's the one who's getting the dumb of the day, by the way. That uh, Uberto here. Uh, um, Umberto, Umberto, may I ask you, that does not explain how it ended up being dildos. Was there a dildo ship? that was floating down the stream, and then suddenly they just decided, we can't carry anymore, throw them over. Did, did, a, did a boat f did, did, did a full of sex toys sink? Uh, maybe a gay cruise. I know it's not politically correct. It's fine. Gay people will laugh and leave jokes about me. Most people aren't as uptight as you think they are. Over the years, the local currents have washed up detritus from industrial waste to animal feed at uh, Camondoli. Most bizarre finds include grizzly array of dead animals and on one occasion even live rabbits. That is nothing like a beach full of dildos. Is nobody paying any attention? But cleanup volunteers are sure that this is the first time plastic penises have been washed up on the beach. I guess temptation is finding those who were holding themselves away. They, they passed the test to give them credit. Uh, the fine has caused local authorities to ban children from the area, and it's not clear how long the ban will last. How long? All right, I find I had to. Here you go, guys. This enjoy the perfect music. Yes, I have found you dildo music to close the show. It's a classic. Uh, welcome aboard. Uh, welcome goodbye. We're leaving if you just tuned in. Some people like tuning in and then tuning out. I don't know what you were doing. But welcome aboard, friends, as we leave. Uh, Sam I B. DeGanji signing off, reminding you that you can donate at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. That would help me immensely. Of course, hit share, hit subscribe, friends. Good night. God bless. Such a good song. Interactive. Bill Bell. Look it up.